but I promise you, you are not lacking anything. Your natural state is abundance. Your natural state is being whole. And there's other things out in this world, whether it's people, society, our mental illness, whatever it may be that makes us feel like we are less than, those things aren't the truth. If I'm thinking about a line, it's you. If I'm trying to be alright with you. I guess I'll show up at your house all blue. Keep it in mind with your family and what is up? I thought I would get up on here today and do another get ready with me. Today we're going to talk about yoga teacher training. So I start yoga teacher training in like three or four weeks, which is wild. <laughs> I honestly, there was definitely a time when I thought I was not going to be able to do it. But here we are by the grace of spirit and hard work um, and money. Let's be real and money. Um, I get to be able to start my yoga teacher training. And so I wanted to talk about some of uh, some of my fears I had, some of the things that were holding me back. Um, and I'm hoping that through exposing my um, my own fears and how I reasoned with myself, I'm hoping that other people can see that yoga teacher training is for everyone. If you feel like you want to do it, do it, do it. <laughs> so yeah, I already did my base and my eyebrows. So. I guess I wrote mine I wrote mine down so we can keep this as a very short and succinct video. So I guess I'll go ahead and um start with my fears and do my highlight and contour. It's going to be really quiet. I'm used to doing my my makeup with a lot of music. So we'll see how that goes. Also, we're literally still still um redoing this room what paneling will be the death of me honestly that's how i'm feeling but yeah i don't know why why people did wood paneling i guess it was that back in the day so i'll go ahead and say my one of my first fears was that i wasn't practicing yoga for long enough. I started, I've been practicing yoga for over a year and how many times I practice in a week really varies. Um, there are weeks when I practice four to five times a week and then there are other weeks where I practice two to three times a week and it is what it is. Um, I also live with pain so like a lot of back pain so there are just times when i just like i can't I, just, I can't and so i you know having only been doing yoga for over a year i felt discouraged because i was like oh like i haven't been practicing yoga long enough like i should really wait a couple more years you know i'm not there yet you know i'm not there at the level of yoga of a yoga teacher which is bull that's that's bull let's be real that's bull because you do the training to become a teacher you know you don't go into it being the bomb diggity or maybe you do i don't know it wasn't like that for me and that's another thing is everyone's journey is different there are people who recommend practicing for um at least two years three years you know there are people who I was reading about this woman who had been practicing yoga for a year and then ended up moving to Bali to um, become a yoga teacher trainer and had her own studio. Having only practiced yoga for about two years, had her own studio. So you see what I mean? There is no, you know, there is a recommended time. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you start yoga on Monday and then you start yoga teacher training on Friday. Maybe give yourself a little bit more time, but don't feel discouraged because you've only been practicing for X amount of years and somebody else has been practicing for like six years before they decided to do yoga teacher training. All that matters is you. That's really it. Whatever is important to you. I knew because I was a college student that the time to do yoga teacher training was going to have to be while I was in college because the way my my loans are set up is it would be nearly impossible to be able to scrounge up what is it about three thousand five hundred dollars um in order to do yoga teacher training 
after I graduated. I knew it was going to be very, very difficult. And not that you can't do it, but for me, it was not going to be very feasible. And so it just ended up being that I decided to dive into um, yoga teacher training, having only an, a year under my, my belt. That's okay. And truthfully, my yoga teacher training is a year long. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of room for growth in that year. And of course, when I'm not at yoga teacher training, I'll still be doing yoga. Um, the next couple fears are all kind of interconnected. And it really has to do with my past as a perfectionist. I like to call myself an ex-perfectionist or a recovering perfectionist because my perfectionist tendencies, while they may have, um, they may have served me when I was younger, they no longer serve me. In fact, it really hinders me. It really does. It really affects my anxiety. I have, um, generalized anxiety disorder and I have depression as well. My perfectionist tendencies really really just um exacerbated those the, my mental illness and so like I said I'm a recovering perfectionist the big thing that I was really worried about was that um I wasn't strong enough I wasn't flexible enough my stamina wasn't enough I felt that all those things like I wasn't good enough that was the big thing. I felt like I was lacking and that because I was somehow lacking that I wasn't fit for yoga teacher training, which again is bull because in yoga teacher training, it's all about learning how to be um, a good teacher. It's all about learning the skills you need. And I, and I guarantee you, it's also about learning that you are enough. You are enough. You aren't lacking anything because you might not be able to do um, an advanced pose like somebody else. If anything, yoga students need to see teachers of all different levels so that they can be encouraged to start yoga. You know what I mean? When people see people who are doing these crazy like ass poses, they feel discouraged. And I know that because I felt that way. And there are still times I'm getting a lot better about, you know, seeing it more as inspiration instead of... Um, a source of unhappiness but it's important for students to know that yoga is for everybody and you don't have to be super flexible to do yoga and again because I'm an ex-perfectionist a very real worry of mine was that everyone else is gonna be better than me I was super worried that I was gonna walk into yoga teacher training and I was gonna see everybody who was so much more advanced than me and I felt like I was just not gonna be able to fit in <laughs> for lack of a better word it all really stemmed from the fear of being vulnerable around other people and that was a really big thing is um i was scared to be vulnerable especially among people that i don't really know and of course throughout the the year i guarantee i'll become more close with these people but it was a really big fear of mine to have to be vulnerable because the way I've had yoga teacher training explained to me by other people is that it's almost like therapy. And a lot of times it involves a lot of vulnerability in front of other people because how can you expect students to be vulnerable with you and have you um, lead their journey if you're too scared to be vulnerable yourself? Vulnerability was a really big thing for me is having to tell myself that although it's going to be uncomfortable at first to be vulnerable in front of a bunch of people it's something that's really necessary and I actually went to group therapy um about two three years ago and that was another thing that was very very scary to me was having to be vulnerable and talk about something so serious as my mental illness with people I literally had no clue who they were and of course, I'm sure they felt very um, vulnerable too, having to open up when someone else came in because I came into the group later. I'm sure that they must have felt some type of way too, having to again be vulnerable um, with someone that they weren't familiar with. 
putting it all out there, being authentic, being brave and courageous is something that is so necessary in all of our lives. And so that's why it's so necessary to um, do that in yoga teacher training. Hand in hand with being vulnerable in front of other people is the fear of failing in front of other people, right? Because I'm one of those people that downward dog, who downward dog really tries me really really tries me and it's a pose that because it tries me that's I know it's a signal for me to do it more often but I was terrified of the idea of not being able to do poses that other people could do or you know if we were practicing yoga for an hour and a half you know me falling down because I'm I you know fatigue or it's you know the stamina again I was like terrified of the idea of like falling or um just all like any kind of mishap i was terrified of that happening in front of a class because nobody wants to nobody wants to feel like a fool in front of other people and nobody wants to feel like others are making fun of them and again if it's yoga teacher training no one's gonna do that we're all there to learn but inside it was like just that that that's that overwhelming sense of fear that i was like oh my god like what if i fail what if you know I, I I can't do those poses. There are certain poses I can't do. What if I have to do them? And of course, obviously with yoga teacher training, because you're learning to become a teacher, you're going to learn modifications. Um, but it was just so scary to me to think that I would be behind people. And of course, there's no such thing as that, because we're all in different steps of our journey. And I cannot possibly compare my chapter three to someone's chapter 12 that just doesn't make sense not only that but everybody's body is different so there's people that have been practicing yoga for only six months and they're way more flexible than me there's people who've been practicing yoga for three years and i can excel at poses that they still have um they are still challenged by and that's not that's okay that's no, that's no um, cause for fear. That's no reason to feel like you're better or less than anybody. It's just an understanding that we are all in different paths. And although our paths might connect, or, or not connect, they might intersect, we're all in our own journey. And it doesn't matter what other people can do. It only matters what I can do and how I feel. Because I, I'm a big stand for, you know, not overextending yourself to look cool in the pose. I did that and I f***ed up my back. And that's why I live with chronic pain was because I was over eager and tried to do handstands and messed up my back because I did not understand proper alignment for that pose. I just wanted to look cool for Instagram. That's all it was. And because of that, now I live with chronic pain. And it's something that, you know, I have to go to the chiropractor for. I have to be very mindful of my back and my knees and a lot of poses. Um, and it all was because I wanted to appear to be something that I wasn't. I don't have to show off. I can be where I am today. I can accept where I am today and be happy, be grateful, be grateful for my body, for taking me places, for opening up, for um, becoming more flexible, becoming more... Um, I can be very grateful for how I am feeling today and how my body can be today because it changes. There are days when I can rock, I can really, really rock some poses. And then there are other days that my hips are like, no, baby, no, not today. Not today, baby girl, not today. <laughs> so all of those things were just fear and when we step out of our comfort zone, that is where true growth happens. When we feel like we are able to be vulnerable around other people, it allows us to have a deeper connection with people. Those fears that I had that I, you know, I wasn't gonna be good enough, you know, I was afraid of failing in front of other people, um, those are all baseless. I know that the only way I can grow is if I fail. If you're not failing, you're not learning. Now I'm at the point where I will be in crow pose and I will whole ass just bop, just fall straight on my face and I laugh and I enjoy it and I think it's funny and I get back up and I do it again. There are times when I'm in tree pose and I can't, I can't hold that leg up for more than two seconds. I can't. There are days I can't. There are days where I can rock it. But all of this is to say that there was no real reason to 
feel like I wasn't good enough or that I needed to wait longer or that, you know, I need to just be better because I, I will grow through yoga teacher training. And last but not least, of course, my one big fear, as is a big fear for a lot of people, money. <laughs> I was really scared about how in the world I was going to swing it. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh my gosh, it's $3,500 plus 500 fee with my application. I was sitting there like, bro, I'm in college. How am I going to make this happen? But again, I knew I was like, oh man, but this is really the time. This is divine timing. This is the time for me to do it. And so I found, I got the $500 for my application. I thought it over really, really long and hard. And I turned in my application. I sent in my $500. I got my email saying that I was in. I was like over the moon. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I really, I'm really doing it. I'm really doing it. And here, here I am, you know, a couple of weeks until yoga teacher training and it's almost like the universe the stars have aligned the plants have aligned everything is in my favor because i am set up for success i found the money for the application i know i'm going to be able to um it might be a challenge that's not to say it's going to be easy to find the money so that's not to say it's not going to be it's going to be easy um to fail in front of them to be vulnerable in front in front of them to have eight hour days where i'm at um training that's not to say it's going to be easy but it is to say that i have all the resources available to me for success and I just want everyone to know that like if you are questioning if you are worthy if you are questioning if you are capable of yoga teacher training I want you to know that you are I want you to feel the fear and do it anyway I want you to feel the uncertainty and do it anyway true growth will come from those moments of uncomfortableness <laughs> I look really forward to um meeting who's going to be in my class, meeting my teacher, um, and just, I look forward to seeing how much I can grow in a year. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And, um, yeah. To end it on a good note, I really wanted to end the end this video with the things I am really excited about. So, like, we talked about our fears. We went through them. We, we discovered that those fears are unbased and they have no real meaning and they can just be let go. They can be released. We don't have to feel the fear anymore. We can feel it. We can accept it. We can let it go and move on so that we can be in a place of power. So, I wanted to end up with, like, things I'm really excited about. Um, I am really, like I said, I'm really excited to see how much I can grow in a year. Um, I just think back to how it was when I first started yoga. And my goodness, I have grown so, so much. So, so much. It's incredible to think how much I have grown since I began my yoga practice. And now to think that, like, I'm gonna be doing yoga teacher training. It's insane. Like, if you would have told me that when I began yoga, I would have been like, okay, yeah, all right. Like, that's not gonna happen. But thanks for, you know, thanks for telling me I have it in me, but it ain't gonna work out. But it is gonna work out. It is. Because I make it work. I'm also just excited to learn how to be a good teacher, you know? Like, learn how to, you know, make a good flow, make a good yoga flow, find out, um, more about anatomy and i believe the um the program i'm doing is also uh doing some <clears throat> excuse me doing some reiki work and above all it has an anti-racist framework if you know anything about me you know i am an incredibly radical feminist like i am very political my father was really political it's passed on to me like i have always been very much into politics and so to be able to do a yoga teacher training that has an anti-racist framework that allows me to not only work through my own issues, but learn how to be able to um, teach others how we can use yoga as a healing tool for racial healing and unity, that's amazing. It's honestly amazing. So there's so many things that I'm so excited for. And there would have been so many things I would have missed out had I not you know, 
responded to the call had i not listened to the people who were encouraging me to do yoga teacher training had i not listened to that tiny tiny little that tiny tiny little whisper inside the back of my head that was saying do it do it do it do it my life would be drastically different and that's not to say i still wouldn't be doing yoga and stuff but the like i said the immense growth that i'm going to have over the next year is going to be amazing and i can't wait because this is a very very vital step for me to be able to help serve the community because above all above all yoga teacher training was so that i could help my community so that i could get better closer to my goals to um bringing more healing into the community so that we can all benefit I'm also really excited to meet other strong-willed people. Um, I'm not sure, how, like, if my class is going to be mostly women or not. I'm not sure if there's going to be white people in there, if it's all going to be black people. I don't know, but I'm excited to see other people who um, have taken the plunge too, and I'm excited to be inspired by their journeys. I feel like when you're able to do growth as a group, the energy of the group is really beneficial. You know what I mean? I feel like when you're able to see that there's other people there with you, there's other people there who are on their grind, who are, you know, trying their hardest, it inspires you to keep going. The healing you can get while you're in a group is just, it's incredible. Again, it's all about that connection. <laughs> it's like I have sunscreen on my face. I've been told by many, many people that yoga teacher training was like therapy for them. That they learned so much about themselves and that they became really closer to themselves as a result. And so um, I'm really excited to find more ways for healing. I'm all about that healing, baby. All about it. Especially because therapy is expensive, y'all. <laughs> it's expensive. I still want to go, but it's expensive. And so I'm, I'm excited to learn um, more about the poses and just finding um, met movement as medicine, as yoga with Adrian likes to say, <laughs> as Adrian Mishler likes to say. I want to find um, movement as medicine. Okay. All right. I just wanted to come on here and show y'all the finished product. My bangs are still drying, but they still look really cute. Um, so yeah, I just wanna, <laughs> my hair's so wet. I just wanna end this video off with saying that if you are feeling called to do yoga teacher training or any other kind of training to help the community or better yourself, but you feel like you are somehow lacking something, I want you to know that that's not you. Those thoughts that tell you that you are lacking something, they are not true. They are not a part of you. Thoughts are not consciousness. They are a part of it, but thoughts themselves are not consciousness. And oftentimes they are thoughts that we have that are very detrimental to ourselves and our journey. So when you feel those things, when you feel those emotions, when you hear those words being spoken in your head, I really want you to question where they're coming from and the validity of them. Because I promise you, you are not lacking anything. Your natural state is abundance. Your natural state is being whole. And there's other things out in this world, whether it's people, society, our mental illness, whatever it may be that makes us feel like we are less than, those things aren't the truth. And so I really want everyone to know that you are good enough for yoga teaching training. You are good enough for anything you want to do at all. You are worth it. You deserve it. You have the power within you. So just, you know, don't pay attention to those words because they're just not true. <laughs> they're not true. They're not. And, um, yeah, I'm so, so, so excited for yoga teacher training. And I'm sure I'll be sharing all of it with you guys. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to end this off on the positive note. Um, the divine in me recognizes the divine in all of you. 
you are all so so special and beautiful and I love all of you um so that being said namaste